Matt Jolly, right here on Georgia Radio. It's always fun when company comes over. You know what I'm talking about. T.G. Shepard and Kelly Lang join us right now via the telephone. Y'all are getting ready to head south and come to Georgia. You're going to be performing uh, up in uh, Trenton, Georgia, Dade County with T. Graham Brown. At least you are, T.G. I guess, is Kelly coming too? I'm not even sure on that. Kelly has already got some other stuff going on, so it's she's just, a busy uh, lady. My, yeah, gee, oh, she's really busy. <laughs> uh, the, but we are. I'm, I'll be headed down there for the Fourth of July for the Dade County Fair with my buddy T. Graham Brown. I hope everybody will come out and catch a show. I'm sure that uh, there's going to be a lot of folks going up there. You know, I was just up there not too long ago, and then I saw something. Uh, I ordered. This is you don't care to know this, but we ordered a metal detector from Ringgold. Georgia. That's one of the biggest <laughs> metal detecting oh places. Gosh. Yeah, well, you know, we live on an old farm and our station's headquartered out of an old 130 plus year old barn. And, you know, you always wonder what's under there. And uh, we found we found some neat stuff. No gold or anything exciting like that. But yeah, that Northwest Georgia area is just beautiful. So I think there's a I think there's a little bit of treasure hunter in all of us. Okay? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Especially yeah. anybody in the music business who's ever tried to pick out a song. And you and Kelly, Kelly, glad you could join us too. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us. Y'all have a, a y'all have a CD coming out, uh, sponsored in part by uh, a very near and dear chicken company to all of us here in Georgia, Springer Mountain Farms. Uh, Mr. Gus Arendelle uh, oh, is helping y'all out with that. We need to have him on Georgia Radio. You know, we've never had him on Georgia Radio. We need to have the well, chicken. I'll tell you what, he, he is one of country music's strongest supporters, and he is. We, we've been spokesmen for for uh, Spring Mountain Farms Chicken for many, many years, and uh, we we love uh, our relationship and, of course, our friendship with Gus. But yeah, we uh, we have a new project uh, called Chemistry that was just released, and we're excited about this new duet album. I'm just so glad y'all are doing this because I think it's, uh, I think it's great that you're doing this. Tell me how y'all met because I love this story, but it's a, well, it's a great story. <laughs> TG was always opening up act uh, for Conway and my dad was Conway Twitty's road manager for 25 years. So I was always around different artists that would open for Conway. So we don't have a specific on how we met, but I was also the opening act for people like TG or, um, anybody, George Strait, Ricky Skaggs, all of these people that were coming through the Nashville area, I was opening acts for them. So I met TG along that era, and I was doing shows. Um, the first memory that I have of him, we were both on a show called Jamboree in the Hills in 81. There was like 60,000 people there that day. And we obviously had already met because we knew to speak to each other and have photos taken and um, that's when I, I first looked at him as a friend, I should mm. say. And uh, many years go by, we did a lot of shows together through the years, but I never thought of him as being a romantic partner. And uh, I'd gotten married early, had two kids, and was married for 15 years. And I ran into his first wife at a party. And she said, uh, hey, how are you doing? I said, ah, it's been a horrible year. I, I went through a divorce. I've got two little girls. She goes, did you know TG single? And I'm like, that's weird. Like, well, <laughs> no, I haven't seen him in years, but what are you saying? You know, come to find out his first wife fixed us up and she told him to call me. She felt that we would make a good team. And here we are 24 years later. I guess she was right. Something tells me TG remembers the day when he first saw this beautiful lady walk into his life. But uh, I don't think so. No. You know, I can't remember a time that she wasn't in our in my I life. I love it. That's, That's great. the strangest thing. I mean, I mean, she's been there so long; it just seems like she's always been there. I can't remember the exact date, but I just I know it. that it was many, many years ago. Forty-three, yeah. maybe years ago. I guess yeah. That's an eternity in the music business. Well, we, we've had Kelly on, and for those of you who are familiar with her stuff, we play, you know, Midnight Train to Georgia and our Georgia Music Spotlight all the time, and we just love your your work there, Kelly. But, T.G., you're, you're, this is the first time you've come on. I love your story about running away from home and joining the circus, so to speak, but, I mean, you ran away from home to get into the music business. Like any 15-year-old kid who 
runs away from home. Back then, they didn't put out an Amber Alert or, you know, <laughs> any of this stuff. <laughs> this was the school of hard knocks. So here you are, homeless, uh, sleeping where you could. And and who comes up to you in the middle? Uh, and if I heard this story correctly, I'll let you tell it. But, I mean, you had just sort of a chance encounter with a very important person. Well, I wound up in Memphis. I hitchhiked from Humboldt, Tennessee to Memphis, and I was eating out of garbage cans and living in the alleys of Beale Street and I went skating one night. A friend of mine worked there, and, and I was standing out front of the skating rink, and the lights were all off, and uh, two or three Cadillacs pull up, and the guy gets out from behind the wheel of the lead car and walks over to me and asks me to come in and roller skate with him, and that guy was Elvis Presley. And... Uh, Wow. I mean, that was the greatest uh, beginning of a friendship that I've ever had in my life. And then after we skated for hours and hours, we went to Graceland, had the famous peanut butter and banana sandwich. And that friendship lasted until the day he passed. Matter of fact, he even gave me my first tour bus to get me started in my career. So he was an incredible human being, but that's the way it happened. And I'm sure the good Lord had something to do with that. I mean, when you're destined to do something, it seems like no matter how hard you try to do something else or, or go a different direction, he always finds a way to steer you back home, even if you're, you know, down and out in an alleyway. Well, I had told my mom, even when I was 12 and 13, I said, Mom, you know, I'm going to meet Elvis someday. He's going to become my friend. And she says, now, son, the chances of you meeting him, let alone becoming his friend, are pretty big. So I'm, I'm afraid you got your hopes up too high. But I always somehow knew that it would happen, and, uh, and lo and behold, it did. And he was a remarkable force in my life, and uh, what a great human being he was. You're certainly giving back. Both of you have been giving back in a big way, and uh, congratulations on another successful year of Country for a Cause. Well, you know, we were able to do that. We host it each year. It's kind of the kickoff uh, of CMA Fest each year. And this year we were able to uh, write a check for $70,000 and give it to uh, Mon Monroe. Monroe uh, Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital yeah, in Vanderbilt. At, at Vanderbilt. And we just uh, were honored to be able to do that to help the children and families that can't afford to pay their bills there. I think that's just fantastic. Well, the new project, Because You Loved Me, uh, which features uh, a number of duets, it's, the, I guess, the single right now, Because yeah, You Love Me, is coming out. Yeah, it's single off of the Chemistry, the Duets Collection album, and uh, it, it is a, basically a labor of love of 11 songs that TG and I picked throughout two years that we took time recording, and uh, it's, it's just songs that we felt that everybody would seem to recognize or resonate with and it sure resonates with our relationship and we just really really enjoyed recording these and we wanted to put this out as a package we, we did a duet years ago called iconic duets and it did really well and so many of the the fans and friends out there had said well, are you ever going to record again well here we are you know so it came out friday and uh, a lot of the songs that we recorded were not duets to begin with but we created them to be duets and somehow I think they, they really feel good as that. They, they seem to go well with our relationship and our personalities. We uh, invite anybody to go to tgshepherd.com or to kellylang.net to get an autographed copy or check our tour schedules or follow us on our social media platforms and uh, YouTube and places like that. You're staying so busy. I don't know how you can keep up with yourselves uh, as, as active as the two of you are. Well, it's pretty difficult, but, I mean, we, we love what we do, and uh, to us, it's not work. It's just a joy to be able to do uh, and make a living doing what we love. I think that's great. In the, in the last few minutes here, I want to talk about songwriting because you both have, you know, been writing your whole life. And we have a lot of folks uh, who listen to, to our station that are, that are writers. They're, they're either authors or publishers. Some of them are poets. And we have some that are songwriters. We have some young and up-and-coming uh, singer songwriters, uh, give them, give them some, uh, some tips on what you're working on right now and where I, cause you're both at very, I, I would imagine similar spots in your career here. Um, give, you know, them, give them I, some lessons learned here, if you don't mind. I will. Uh, one of the lessons that I can share or a tidbit of advice, I write songs and I kind of put them on the shelf. So they kind of stay there for quite some time. And if I wait long enough, 
in this case in particular, uh, 15 years, I didn't give up hope on the song. I just didn't know where it was going to end up. Um, I spent the day at the Capitol of Tennessee State Capitol yesterday with Governor Lee, and he gave me a proclamation claiming my new song as or under Tennessee Moon, the song that I wrote, the new state song of Tennessee. And, you know, my encouragement in that is not to brag about that, but if you have written something, don't be impatient. Just, you know, realize that it's written or, or created and it might not have its time yet. If you wait patiently enough, it perhaps could evolve into something like that. Or you might see the, the elevation of, of that material that you've recorded or written down um, in a totally different time or space than you ever thought it was recorded or written in. So uh, I, that's happened to me on a few occasions. I just don't lose hope. And I, I want writers and creatives out there to not lose hope. That is a huge honor. I mean, that's, that's colossal. I can only, I can just think of a couple of guys that are, and gals that are listening right now going, man, if we were to do that in Georgia, Ray Charles would come back from the dead and Willie Nelson might come down and try and pop us over the head too, you know? (laughs) It's really sweet because Tennessee has a lot of songwriters here. That's what I'm thinking. uh, To be, we have more than one state song. Uh, I'm right up there with now Tennessee Waltz and Rocky Top and Smoky Mountain Rain. You know, there's a few. But, uh, man, what a, what a thrill. I mean, the biggest thrill of this was my mom, who encouraged me to write the song in the first place, was able to be with me at the governor's office yesterday and to see me sing it at the Opry Thursday night. So, you know, I just don't give up hope, I think, is the, the key to all of that. I think that's fantastic. Can I, can I just tell you, I, you, you mentioned the Opry, and I have listened to it for years uh, years and years. We listen on the front porch here at our old farmhouse and we enjoy it. My son's favorite part, uh, are when the cloggers come out on Saturday night, you know, cause you can oh, hear him I love that. and he loves it. So here we go. We're sitting up in the seats, uh, way up there in the nosebleed section. A couple of weeks ago, we're sitting there and my wife looks at me and her, her cousin who's there with us. And, and they say, we, we have to go. And Jeannie Seeley had just sang, open the show. And I look at him. I'm like, we just got here. Like, we have to go. We got to stand up. We got to go. So we walk downstairs and my son hears a clogger walking over and this lady walks up. I, I won't say her name. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. And she says, you know, are y'all here and ready to go? And we look at her and I, I have no idea what's going on. But my, uh, my wife's cousin who lives there is friends with this lady. And she said, well, we're going backstage. And <laughs> if you could just imagine how excited we were to get to watch the Opry from backstage, uh, what an experience. What a magical place. And I am forever grateful. Uh, well, TG to always cloggers. says that's where the real show begins. You know, yeah. it's, it's so fun backstage. Well, I'm I'm the Clogger's biggest fan. Now, so. <laughs> I uh, think they're fantastic. And it's such a great tradition, isn't it? It is. Well, it's just a, it's just a magical experience to be there. And I'm going to have to come back and see both of you. But again, uh, if you're in town and you're looking for something to do, there's a million things to do on the 4th of July. Go see TG Shepard. And uh, Kelly... I hope that you'll both come back and talk to us uh, when the album comes out and its completion and uh, bring bring Gus on with you, too. We'd love to show him some love at some point. But thank you both for coming on. Matt, thank you so much for your time today. It's always a pleasure, and uh, we hope to see you in person soon. Georgia Radio. Good company and great country. Yeah.